Using weeds as indicators of soil quality is a practice with a long history. Going back to 50 AD, the esteemed Roman scholar, Pliny the Elder, astutely noted that lands supporting wild plum, elder, oak, and thimbleberry tended to be well-suited for wheat cultivation. These plants gave him a clue about the soil and therefore what to grow. Early North American settlers similarly selected their farmsteads based on the vegetation present, swiftly recognizing that regions dominated by white pine were typically indicative of less agriculturally productive sandy soils. Conversely, forests featuring birch, beech, maple, or hemlock signaled more fertile soil conditions. This practice becomes especially invaluable when bringing new land under cultivation, as it provides essential insights into which techniques to apply and what soil conditioners to incorporate. Weeds thrive because they can outcompete other plants in a particular type of soil or conditions. To understand this, consider various conditions, such as soil fertility, water availability, and nitrogen levels. A weed like lamb's quarter, for instance, prefers nitrogen-rich soil. When there's a small section with excess nitrogen, it can outcompete other plants. Similarly, in compacted soils, plants with deep tip roots like sunflowers can outcompete others unable to penetrate the compacted layers. The key point here is that weeds aren't there just to bother you. They're fulfilling ecological niches you haven't addressed. Just like in hard and compacted soils with abundant sunlight but shallow soil depth, you'll find cover weeds. These are low-growing plants with shallow roots that spread across the ground. Next, there are protector weeds like thistles, armed with physical defenses. They often have deep roots and improve soil quality, usually in low-fertility soils. They tend to follow cover plants. Then there are compaction removers like sunflowers and tillage radishes. These plants have strong root systems that break through compacted layers, accessing nutrient-rich soil below. Another type are the soil aggregators include grasses with fine, fibrous root systems that stabilize loose soils. Lastly, you have nitrogen or nutrient regulators. Some plants, like legumes, excel in nitrogen-poor soils by forming symbiotic relationships with nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Others, like lamb's quarter, thrive in nitrogen-rich conditions, helping to regulate excess nutrients. Some plants, like Patterson's Curse, accumulate specific nutrients and release them upon decomposition, benefiting other plants. Moreover, there are ecosystem transition plants like trees that signal a transition from grasslands to forests. While undesirable in croplands, they serve a purpose in pasture ecosystems. There are indicator plants, too, that are not typically considered weeds, but offer valuable information about soil conditions. The first is the sand cherry, which naturally grows in sandy soil, making it a clear indicator of such soil type. The second is the wild blueberry, which thrives in acidic soil with a pH level, typically ranging from 4 to 5, making it an excellent indicator for acidic conditions. These plant indicators can provide valuable clues about soil quality without the need for immediate soil testing. Some versatile weeds also tell about the less favorable soil conditions. Maline is a commonly known weed that tends to thrive in weaker and more acidic soils. Dandelions have deep tap roots that can indicate low calcium levels and compacted soil. Also, there is wood sorrel that has heart-shaped leaves. It can signify low calcium and high magnesium content in the soil. Many indicator plants tell about good soil. The stinging nettle is a surprising edible plant that indicates rich and acidic soil. Chickweed, often found in high nitrogen soil, serves as another indicator of quality soil conditions. Lamb's quarters is a wild edible that flourishes in high nitrogen, nutrient-rich soil. Its growth and size can provide valuable insights into the soil's quality as these indicator plants can offer valuable clues about soil conditions, but a formal soil test remains the gold standard for precise information. Certain other weeds that are popular indicators of soil health include bitter dock that often makes its home in damp or swampy areas. Its presence could be an indicator that the soil in that location tends to be poorly drained, and it might not be the best spot for certain plants. This delicate-looking fern thrives in near-neutral and dry conditions. If you spot it taking over your garden, it is signaling that the soil is neither too acidic nor too alkaline, making it a versatile indicator of your soil's balance. Before we get on with some more examples, we also want to encourage you to think about what plants thrive in what conditions. 
as blueberries like acidic soil. That could be a good or bad thing. If you are trying to grow blueberries, that's great. If you are trying to grow something that thrives in different conditions, work will need to be done to raise the pH. This is particularly applicable to gardeners trying to cultivate beds for specific types of plants. Back to our weeds. Handbit is a weed that prefers soil rich in nitrogen. Its appearance could suggest that your soil has an abundance of this nutrient, which can be beneficial for many plants, but it might also hint at an imbalance if nitrogen levels are excessively high. Resembling its cousin, bachelor's button, knapweed is often found in soil rich in potassium. If you spot knapweed, it is telling you that your soil likely has ample potassium levels, an essential nutrient for plant growth. Besides this, the ostrich fern is a remarkable indicator of exceptionally fertile soil. If you're fortunate enough to have this fern growing in your area, it is a sign that your soil is rich and primed for a variety of plant life. You must have seen ox eye daisy that tends to thrive in acidic, often soggy soil with poor fertility. Its presence might prompt you to address drainage and fertility issues to create a more suitable environment for your garden. If you spot purely everlasting, you might want to consider enriching your soil since it tends to prefer acidic soil with low nutrient levels. On the flip side, if peppergrass is making itself at home in your garden, that's a sign of sweet, well-balanced soil. Plantain is the tough one in the bunch, often thriving in compacted, sour soil, which could indicate soil compaction issues that need addressing. Purslane, besides being an indicator of rich soil, is actually edible and nutritious, so it is a bit of a win-win situation. Quack grass, on the other hand, is a resilient weed that can tolerate heavy clay and compacted soil, which might prompt you to think about soil compaction. Queen Anne's Lace prefers poor but slightly alkaline soil, so if you spot this delicate wildflower, it is a nudge to consider enriching your soil. Ragweed typically pops up in low fertility soil, so you might want to think about adding nutrients to help your desired plants thrive. Sheep Sorrel, on the contrary, signifies dry, sandy, acidic soil that's low in nutrients and calcium. Lastly, if yarrow is thriving, it is an indicator that your soil could use a boost in potassium and overall nutrient supplementation. So in a way, these weeds are like nature's messengers, helping you understand your soil's needs for a healthier and more productive plantation. We hope this will help you think about weeds in a different way. Many regenerative techniques can help to amend soil conditions, particularly if you know what you are working with. Animal impact can break up compaction, chickens can provide nitrogen, and the list goes on. It's also worth noting that many weeds offer medicinal uses and health benefits to animals. We hope you will join us in learning more about weeds, soil, and how they can benefit our environment. See you in the next video.